Hello everyone and welcome back to the best investing podcast in the world. Today we are going to be reviewing how Spotify has become a $100 billion plus business when just two years ago everyone thought this was a mediocre company and how along the way this has become a over 5x investment for me and actually my best investment ever. For those of you that can't watch videos for too long, the takeaway from this is that Spotify is a world-class implementation of the Costco algorithm. It's basically Costco but for music and for those of you that have to time to watch videos and like to learn about things in depth, let's get deep into it. Spotify is now a $100 billion plus business. In the graph on the screen now, you can see how Spotify's market cap has evolved over the past few years, trending down to a low of $14 billion in late 2022 before surging to the current levels. Back in the 2022 lows, the consensus was Spotify was a mediocre business, but a first principles understanding of the fundamentals revealed otherwise. Much like the Netflix case that I covered just two videos ago, Spotify teaches us that the path to wealth is focusing on fundamentals over price action. In businesses with network effects, scale precedes profits in the list of strategic priorities. Understanding this fact, coupled with a few other important mental abstractions, is what enabled me to bet the house on Spotify at $97.50 per share. I term the mental model behind this investment the Costco algorithm, which I teach in my tech stock goldmine course, which by the way, a few days ago I just made available some coupons to enable you to buy the course obtain lifetime access for just $250. The price is going up to $350 24 hours after this video drops. And now at the moment, I believe there's something like only 40 coupons left. So link to that in the show's footnotes and use code PLTR, just literally the letters at checkout to obtain your discount, obtain lifetime access. And then of course, once you buy, you get access to all future versions and the course is only getting better and better. So yeah, that's that. In essence, Costco's operational blueprint is replicable across industries and world-class in implementations of it usually end up in extraordinary success. The Costco algorithm is best understood via the slide below taken from my course. Costco is unreasonably obsessed with lowering real prices for end customers to ultimately deliver more value per dollar spent, thus amassing more capital and then reinvesting it to lower prices further. This operational blueprint was actually coined as economies of scale shared by Nick Sleep and over the long term amounts into vast goodwill with end customers. The operation gets harder to replicate with every turn of the flywheel as the company is able to profitably operate with lower prices. As prices go lower and the scale of operation increases, this gives competitors less oxygen to operate. Over time, this amounts into a strong moat whereby customers have little reason to buy from any other company. Customers simply default to the company running the Costco algorithm at world-class level because they know they will get the best deal possible across the board. In the market's defense, I will say that Spotify's free cash flow per share trended down considerably in 2022, as you can see on the graph on the screen now. As happened with Amazon and Meta, in the same period as I explained in my deep dives back then, the market sent the stock down to unreasonably cheap levels by extrapolating the evolution of free cash flow per share. This is why I insist that financials are the scaffolding on which you build your qualitative thesis on, but usually require qualitative expertise to interpret correctly. After the decline in 2022, you can see how free cash flow per share has then proceeded to grow exponentially financially as I predicted years ago. So what happened? Essentially, Spotify's world-class implementation of the Costco algorithm suddenly started showing up in the financials. In late 2022, Spotify was compounding goodwill faster than ever, with Mao's monthly active subscribers growing at record pace. Since its foundation, Spotify has been focused on iterating the user experience faster than competitors in order to delight customers. Spotify's top operational priority is enhancing user lifetime value such that every implementation on the app adds to this metric. At a deeper level, Spotify's top priority is delivering more value to end customers per dollar spent on their behalf. As Spotify achieves more scale, it's able to make the investments to deliver more value at lower prices, making it harder for others to compete. To me, the clearest evidence of Spotify's extraordinary ability to run the Costco playbook was that it has managed to beat Apple and Amazon Music simultaneously with much smaller resources than these two large companies. Although at the surface, Spotify looks similar to Apple and Amazon Music, the user experience is superior enough for the above equation to work out. In a rather subliminal manner, Spotify delivers more value to end customers per dollar spent, and that's why they've managed to get ahead and become the number one music app. This has primarily come as a result of their exclusive focus on the task, while the focus of Apple and Amazon are actually split across many other businesses. After decades of being exclusively focused on compounding customer goodwill, Spotify has shifted some of its attention to becoming an extraordinary business. The 
work they've done over the past few decades has created a strong moat that has put them in a position to make a lot of money going forward. The exponential rise of free cash flow per share has been the result of some minor price increases and additional focus on cost efficiencies, as you can see on the graph on the screen now. Costco only increases prices when they have verified that they've added sufficient additional value to end customers, and cost efficiency has been a major focus for them since the outset, driving much of the additional value that they've delivered to customers over the decades. However, Spotify is a network-defined variant of the Costco algorithm, and for them, the most important lever to deliver more value to end customers is actually scale. Spotify needs to be the largest platform in their domain in order to provide the most value. This is generally true of all other businesses with network effects. The moment a larger platform comes along, your earning power starts to wither considerably. This is why I say that in business with network effects, scale precedes profit in the list of strategic priorities by far. Another great example of this axiom is Amazon. They focused on scale over profits for decades, as you can see on the graph on the screen now. Amazon's extraordinary earning power as a result of focusing on compounding customer goodwill for decades only started to show up in the financials towards the end of last decade. Amazon is a world-class implementation of the Costco algorithm, but with network effects. The Spotify case shows how the market hasn't quite learned to identify value early in this kind of scenario. In fact, my recent Wise Deep Dive, which will be live by the time this video is released, is another example of the Costco algorithm working beautifully. Since the economy is now evolving into a collection of networks, essentially, I have created a specific section in my course to teach folks how to spot network-defined variants of the Costco algorithm. For shorthand, I now call them the Amazon slash Spotify algorithm. One of the most important aspects of the Amazon slash Spotify algorithm is understanding that for this sort of companies, focusing on cash flows is much more useful than focusing on the income statement. In 2022, much of the market's focus was on Spotify's lack of profitability when the company was producing ample cash from operations, as you can see in the graph on the screen now. Excellent growth companies engineer the income statements to minimize profits in order to minimize taxes and reinvest the most amount of capital possible. The cash flow statement is therefore a much more accurate representation of a growth company's earning power. And much of the asymmetry of the Spotify thesis back in 2022 stemmed from its positive cash from operations. The business was in fact much more viable than the market believed, on top of as well presenting great upside down the line. While Spotify's fivefold increase in value from $97.5 per share would seem sufficient, the company in my view has a long way to go from here. Spotify has been adding new audio verticals to the platform with far better unit economics than music. Historically, Spotify has had to pay 75% of the money it makes to music labels in exchange for music rights. But this is now changing as Spotify users come to spend more time listening to podcasts, audiobooks, and the subsequent audio verticals that Spotify will deploy. Some time ago, I said that Spotify was the Google of audio in the making, highlighting the fact that Spotify is actually becoming a search engine. I believe that five years from now, Spotify will have solved a vast volume of problems for both creators and consumers across a broad range of actually media verticals, no longer just audio verticals, greatly increasing margins and free cash flow. By then, the platform will look and feel like a search engine, and I believe will also give YouTube and other search engines a very hard time. Spotify's earnings are coming up on the 4th of February, so stay tuned for my update. And once again, as I was saying, if you're interested in learning mental models of this sort that will enable you to make great investments, write amazing deep dives, build an audience and all of that, consider signing up to my course. By now, there will be something like 30 coupons to obtain lifetime access for $250 instead of $350. So these will be running out quick. So if you want to secure a spot, make sure that you buy as soon as possible and you have the link in the show's footnotes. And as well, if you're not absolutely satisfied with your purchase, you have a 14 day, no questions asked money back guarantee. All you have to do is email me and ask for a refund and I'll give it to you straight away. But I actually guarantee that most of you will absolutely love the course. And then you'll want to participate in the free Slack channel that we have where you can talk to me and other people that have gone through the course. And it's actually just a magnificent experience that I'm sure absolutely most of you will love. So hopefully see you guys at the other side when you buy the course. And if not, you'll always have access to my free deep dives. As always, if you enjoyed this, I'd like to please ask you a favor, which is to share this with one friend. If you got value out of this, sharing it with one friend helps me a lot because the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much in advance. Take care and until next time.